people say that to white people, and I'm like, Oof, your cauliflower skin, <laughs> you know, take me away. Welcome to the Aria Book Club. Get around, everybody. Take a chair. Sit down. Take off your coat. It's winter outside. You're looking fine. I love your outfit. Beautiful. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> so, this week, the book that we wanted to read. Well, the one that we read was called the one. Well, one to watch. Okay, so we're going to change our formula. So instead of like making a big, big, like you know, uh, resume overview, of the overview book. of the book. Well, because we've all read it, right? So you don't need to yeah, hear it twice. Exactly. I mean, we told you to read it. So if you didn't, you're stupid. Oh my god. <laughs> So, okay, so basically we'll just, you know, talk briefly about it and then we'll just talk about some points that we just really liked or hated or just neutral about the book in general. So basically we're following our main protagonist, which who is called Bea. She works in fashion, she's a size plus, and this is very important because okay. if she wasn't a size plus, then we wouldn't have the book. So she's a size plus. And basically there's like this dating reality show, which is, you know, if you've, if you've seen a dating reality show, you've seen all of them. <laughs> Basically, like, she's the main contestant and there's like a dozens of guys who, who are fighting for her love. And it's basically her throughout this whole experience as a fat person and how she lives it. So, what do you think of the book? So, I didn't... Okay, I like the book and I like its message because again, as a fat person, I could relate to Bia like a lot. I mean, frankly, I really could relate to her. I didn't like her as a person. Per se. I mean, in the sense that... What I, we would have been friends. She kind of got on my nerve, but again, what she was living through and how people saw her, well, it's kind of the same way that people see me. So how she reacted, I was just like, yeah, I, I get, get it. it. I, I, I get it. So when you're fat, people judge you a lot more. And basically she's not saying like, hey guys, be fat. She's not about, she's not about like fat acceptance. She just wants people to see her as a human and for some reason, just that view gets really politi political with people. You yeah, know? that's that's one thing that I noticed mm -hmm. reading the book because I've I, I'm not fat. I've never been fat, so I I cannot relate as much to like her insecurity or the way she perceives people to perceive her. Because I don't know, I don't have that that thinking process in me. But what I did notice reading the book was the fact that she was just existing, right? She was just <laughs> living her life. She wanted to find love and go on vacations and mm. do her blog. And everyone was being so political about it. It was so either like she's promoting fatness. She's not a good role model. It's like, since when does she have to be a good role model? She, exactly. She's not asking for it. She's not president. She's just asking to find love on TV show. That's it. And she had a blog and basically, I mean, yeah, her blog was more for size, you know, plus size people because yeah. she's a plus size woman. And basically, and that's something that we want, I want to talk about it too. Fashion for plus size people. When you go into a shop, suddenly it's like, it, I'm 25 years old. I want to wear something that a 25 year old would wear. But what is, why is there only people, you know, things for like 45 years old, 50 year old. And I'm talking like... Like Midwest woman <laughs> who've never seen like sushis in her life, and like this is what she would wear before going to her farm. And it's like there's nothing wrong with that, That's but I would like something more, you know? Like like I want to wear something cute. Like I want to wear something like you know where I can show up my assets. But no, like <laughs> nothing. <laughs> A lot of the trends nowadays are for skinny people, right? So crop top and uh, high waisted jeans and all that kind of thing. Do you think people exclude fat people consciously of those trends? They don't make it to that size because they don't want them to wear it? I mean, it's like, frankly, I don't, I'm not quite sure about it. Because again, me, I wouldn't feel comfortable wearing a crop top and some jeans. Okay. But again, I've seen like some fat people, even fatter people I mean, than, than what I am, basically, that have worn like crop top jeans and yeah. it's beautiful yeah, on them. Yeah, no, and I'm just like, yeah, girl, work it. <laughs> like, truly work it. But I'm not comfortable because I'll be like, oh my God, they'll see my stomach. Do we live in a fat phobia world in a way that people sometimes don't treat us as human? I mean, I don't know, as if we're pigs, exactly, we're yeah, there. Yeah, kind of like circus freaks, right? Exactly, exactly. Yes, I do believe so, because, again, really? it's still considered as an insult. Like, it's when you're fat, like, it's it's an insult. And you like, yeah, yeah, I'm fat, but anyway, it is what it is. But at, at the same time, like, should there be more things? Like, I don't, let, let's say 
airplanes. Like example, I, I went on a trip recently. And basically, man, I was so insecure about the, the seats. I was just like, man, I'm fine. I'm just going to be like in everyone's way. But again, should, should I feel as if the airline should, you know, modify their seats so that I can feel better in it? I don't think so. Because for me, again, I mean, again, I, I won't go too much into it, but I feel like for fat people, I mean, of course, there are conditions where, you know, you just, you know, you just have, sometimes it's just your body, that, that's it. But a lot of times, and I'll end up talking about myself in that case, that's because I have a, how do I say that? Um, a food, I have a food addiction, basically. I have a food addiction, and that's the reason I'm fat. And so basically, should people accommodate me because of my food addiction? I don't think so, because it's a problem that I created myself. Yeah, but at the same time, like, we accommodate a lot of... Because it's a mental illness, right? Addiction is a mental illness. Hmm. We accommodate a lot of mental illnesses. Of course, of course we do, but we don't do it like in a physical, I mean like in a physical way. You know I mean, what I mean? Like, but people will treat you differently and be like, yeah, I understand. And yeah. this is something that I would like to. But again, they won't modify, like like I said, you know, airplanes. They, they won't... No, because there's no physical consequences to Exactly. It. But we still change our ways to facilitate their life. Basically, it's like, I don't want you to go up into my business. I don't want you to go be like, hey, like, you know, you're fat. Because I already know that. Basically, just treat me as a human. Like, I, yeah. I guess. That, that, that's that's, that's it, you know? <laughs> like, just be like. And basically, this is what BI is asking all along. Just yeah. like, hey, like, I'm just living my life. Just, just treat me, that's it, as a human. Don't. Like, I don't want my fatness to be the only thing that you see. And this is what she's afraid of because this is it. This is what people see her as just yeah. only fat. Not like Bia, not this woman who has a successful blog, who is fashion forward. No, they only see her fat. as a fat person. <laughs> That's what she is. And she's, she's confronted with a lot of men that only see that, right? So there's a lot of stereotype contestants in there. Mm. Uh, the first one is very mean in the way he approaching so when he sees her he just like yeah no thank you and leave the show in front of the whole nation so that's like to not even be considered mm. because you're fat mm. i mean it's a love yeah. I mean, it's hard frankly i would have cried i mean she, she did but i would have cried <laughs> a little yeah. bit more and he was just like running out, <laughs> out of it as if you know she had like five arms and she was green and she looked like I mean, I was going to say like Fiona, but I think that Fiona is hot, so... Oh yeah, you know, it, it does bring a question though of, do you think fatness or just someone not wanting to date a fat person is fatphobic? Is it a preference to date someone that's not fat or have a preference that's skinny or not? I mean, I don't think it's fatphobic. I mean, in that way, I feel like just people have their preferences. I mean, for me, I'm not attracted to shorter men, but I don't think that I'm like... Short height phobic. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, of course, I mean, it is a book and it wasn't a TV show, so yeah. it was kind of extreme. Like, of course, I never said like hi to someone and they're just like ran, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, hello, fuck no. <laughs> truly so sad oh my god but again i'm quite sure that you know i mean example I, i'm on tinder so I, and i put photos on me like where i see you know not that it's my whole body naked but you know <laughs> <It's> exactly <laughs> so and i know that some people just like was cold because like, you know they didn't like the fact that i'm fine and, and again frankly that doesn't matter to me okay again but then for the people who like it and this is where it is example bea she meets like, and it was very brief, but she meets one of the contestants and clearly, clearly he sees her as a fetish. Have you ever been scared that someone just see you as a fetish for, I don't know, the fact that you're white or you have brown hair or beautiful blue-green eyes? Honestly, never. <laughs> I don't know what kind of fetish I could represent, but like, there's so many white women out there. That, like, <laughs> it doesn't... Like, it's not a fetish, you know? Mm. Like, it don't even have to be open up, like, oh yeah, I have a fetish for white women. Like, there's so many of us, just... Just one. one of them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like fetish is more particular to, like, a minority, mm -hmm. and I'm not one, so... Fair enough, fair enough. I'm always scared of fetishes. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, frankly, a lot of people have approached me because I'm black. You know, the moment that they, they, you know, they, they go with their whole, uh, oh, yes, your chocolate skin. Oof, black women. They, they turn me on, and I swear to God, if someone compares my skin to chocolate again, <laughs> one, one time. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm losing my shit. I mean, I don't 
which is so weird because I don't say that to white people. I never like Oof, your cauliflower skin, <laughs> you know, take me away. <laughs> like big marshmallow, pasteurized <laughs> milk. <laughs> So there's that and then there's also people who let's say you fetishize fat people and it's like look it and it's, okay, and it's so weird because at the same time there's like a person of you who's like a percentage of you is like hey i'm happy that someone actually likes like my envelope yeah, exactly yeah. but at the same time it's like you're an object and they're just and they aren't looking at you they're just looking for something to screw or you know yeah, yeah. get their rocks on so yeah so you kind of feel dirty I mean, of course, again, some people like it, and if you like it, then you do you, honey. Like, truly, you do you. Oh, but personally, you? I don't. So there's always that, okay, so does he like me for me? Or is it because I'm black? Or is it because I'm fat? Or because like, it's bold and they found, like, their, their you know... Their perfect fetishes. Exactly. <laughs> so basically, when Bea, she, she meets one, and they're in the pool, and in my, yeah, like, automatically, he's like, oh my god, yes, the fact that you're oh, fat, oh yes, curves. you're curved, and she's just like, whoa, <laughs> like, I don't even know your name, <laughs> so calm yourself. Way too intense, that makes her uncomfortable, and frankly, I was like, I get it, sister. Yeah, you're getting, get like, it. so sexualized for just existing. Mm. Like, mm. I think women have enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. <laughs> And uh, what about those other contestants? Yeah, there's um, there's two other types, well, three. There's the cute little one that actually likes her fur, but we'll talk about them later. Um, there's the, the gym bro, <laughs> in a sense, that's like, oh, I can help you get better. Mm. I'm, I'm sure you've been approached by people to be like, I can help you. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, but more by women than by men. Really? Yeah. You know, I've never been approached like a, a, as a project, but I've seen like, I'm like, hey, like, I'll help you get better. And I'm just like, who are you? <laughs> Do I know you? Hey. Yeah, I know that, like, you told me, it, it was when we were younger. I know you told me at one point you went for, like, ice cream, and someone came up to you, took upon themselves to be like, hi, you know that's not healthy? Right? When they were adding, like, an ice cream in their hand. <laughs> I was like, no shit, Sherla. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not good for you either. Why are you eating it then if it's so important? I mean, what, how, would, how would you have reacted if someone would be like, hey, you know it's not good for eating ice cream? I mean, <laughs> am I fat or am I not? Like, no, no, just, just, like, yeah, just as you are right now. I mean, there's not the like, the understanding that they do it because I'm fat. Mm -hmm. So I would just be like, yeah, so. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> Like when you, when people say that to you, like you don't feel mad at first. You, you just feel like you, you kind of feel like saying like sorry. Like I was just like ashamed. yeah, I know, I, yeah, ashamed. Really? Exactly. Like I felt ashamed. I was just like like oh my god, I know it's not healthy for me, but but I can't help it. <laughs> As if like you had something to explain to them. But again, it's like no, I really don't. I don't know you, stranger. Like go away. <laughs> and that's the thing that also be not she experiments something like that. But at the same time, it's like, Bia is like, hey, I'm my own person. Yes, I'm fat. But just again, stay out of my life. I'll present you some things of my life because again, she has yeah, her she wants fashion that. blood. Yeah. So of course, she'll present some things. But again, what she is, what she does, like, it's really none of your business. <laughs> like, truly really none of your business. Yeah, so there was the, the gym bro. Mm -hmm. And then there was, and that's something that I never realized before reading that book. But I didn't notice after I read it. I was like, oh my God, that's true. But it's the... The men that act with Bia as if she's a bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now let me talk about that too. <laughs> okay, so basically they don't see you as a guy guy in a way that there's no like competition, there's no yeah, like, you know, <laughs> exactly like, I have to always be strong. I mean I have more guys broke break down on me than, than than anyone else. Like truly, it's as if they're just like, yes, I can be myself with that person. I don't have to pretend to be anything, I don't have to pretend to be like, strong to charge, because yeah. it, it, them or whatever. It's exactly that. So basically, like, I become friends with them very fast, very, very fast. And I, I know about their most inner deep thoughts in like three weeks or something. Because, like, I was saying, yeah, they see me as if I was their mother. You know, in a way, like, they, 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 they just, I know, I know. And it's so weird because again, I get attached, you know, and they're just like, and I feel not that I feel honored, but it's you know, someone is yeah. up to you. So. And it sucks because that's how you create like very deep connection with people. It's by sharing your intimate moments and sharing your secrets and whatever. And so you have that with them, 
but they can't like close the door of anything going further. They really do. Like example, I had a back in school. I kind of had a crush him, but I wanted him to be my best friend. So, okay, so I'll just give him a fake name. Call him uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> That oh yeah, like Harry Potter. All right. Okay. So imagine that Harry Potter was like the six feet brownest, like yes, I that mean, guy. He remember? Was, he was hot. Okay. He was hot. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. He was very hot. Like beautiful, handsome, and he really liked me. And at first, I was just like, Oh my god, hi, hi. <laughs> how are you? And then I realized that like, Oh yeah, that's true. I'm fine. He doesn't care about me as an attractive person. But again. I won't take it personal because again, preferences are preferences. Yeah. And again, we got close real fast, like real, real fast. Like we were talking on the phone like 30 minutes, at least three times a week. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know. And I, and I was just like, oh my god, it's happening. But it, but it was weird because at school, yeah, we hung out, but not much. But again, the moment that I arrived home, my phone would ring. Did you feel like a dirty secret type of? I didn't feel it was a dirty secret at the time. But now that I look back at it, I'm just like, wait, was I, was I some kind of like emotional mistress? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this, oh my god, it's basically the relationship that Bea has with Ray. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Right? So, I mean, if you want to describe it, Ray. Oh, I hate Ray so much, though. <laughs> He's so annoying to me, but yeah, Ray is Bea's best friend. So they've been together since college, They're, they, they go out, they party a lot. During a drunken night, they kiss, and then Bea's like, it's happening! He has a few like years of crushing over him, you know? Then he fucking bounces and he takes a fiance and she's like, oh, okay, I guess not. And he comes back after one point, they do a party night again and they, they sleep together, right? Yeah, they do sleep together. They sleep together and, and then... it's like the best night ever. You know, like together they're like crying while making love and just like, I love you, know, I love you. So like Bia is, you know, waking yeah. up and she's like, she's like, it happened. That's, like... that's my love, perfect. I'm, I'm set, like children, the house, give it all to me. And then he just bounces. I believe in a way like he did love her because she was comfortable. Yeah, yeah, you know, she was. She, a best she was friend, always you know? there. Yeah, yeah. and she, and he knew she had feelings for him, and I think that he used that too. Yeah. Because again, she was just always there. Of course, of course, you know. And then she enters the competition and blah blah blah, and he sees that. And I felt it was like, oh wait, I can lose her. I, I don't even think he was. I can lose her. I think it's she's moving on. Mm. And I knew I always had that grip on her, and I'm losing that. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Because yeah, he come back, he comes back as if he was like the romantic lead in a movie. Like I'm here now. <laughs> Not even like take me back, but it's like I'll take you. I thought Bea would have been like, Oh my God, you came back! I love you. Fuck these other men. Like this is a reaction he thought was going to have, and Bea she was like, not. Yeah, about that. No. <laughs> And I feel like we could feel this. What? What do you mean? <laughs> what I'm do you perfect. mean? I'm beautiful. <laughs> you love me. Exactly. Sometimes, you know, attractive guys, they'll, they'll give you like a... You know, just that, enough to keep you. Exactly. Just yeah. enough to keep you. But when you reject them, it's it's that whole like... You know when a guy approaches you in know, a bar and, and suddenly you're the most pretty, pretty girl, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, and then you say no, it's like, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I believe that the experiments that, that, you know, some guy gives her some attention. And at the end, she's just like... Look, I'm sorry, but it's not going to work out, you know? And then he explodes it. Like, you know, like, I give you something. Like, I, I have the... Oh, Jefferson, saying, you mean, right? Oh, my... Okay, so but this Jefferson is one of the contestants. And yeah, sure, they're, they're good. But, you know, Bea doesn't feel the spark. She doesn't feel the spark. She's just like, look, I like you as a friend, but it's just not going to work out. And again, he explodes. Oh, it's so hard to read. It really was. It really was. So he, he's insulting her. He's insulting her weight. Uh, like, you know, and it's like, oh, you think you're better than me? Yeah, saying she's pathetic, that nobody loves her, nobody wants her. That nobody will ever. And yeah. that was just like, oh, god damn. Because again, it's only his pride. He, he wasn't in love with her. Like, truly he wasn't. Yeah, moving on a little bit from the, the hardness and mm. the, the mean. Which one was your favorite contestant? That, that were actually nice, you know, because there's some of them that are very nice. I'm going to get his name. Actually, I have two. Because the main contestant, I mean, the, the one you know that she's going to end up with, Asher, he was a little bit of a dick. I hate him. I, oh, okay. I hate him. Okay, I don't hate him, but he gets on my nerves so much. I understand. Okay, so <laughs> Asher is a father, right? So the mom walks out on the on him and his two kids it was ugly you know yeah, it, it really was cute. so he has a little bit of um how was 
issues. Yeah, it's <laughs> very it. protective of what his kid sees and like bringing someone to their life. So I understand that he's very picky on the person he's gonna bring. But he goes onto a show with 16 contestants fighting for one woman. And then. But then, yeah, at the same time, he's judging the woman. Yeah, okay, he's getting mad at Bea because she's going out on the dates. It's like, that's the point of the show. If you don't like it, don't do it. He's already acting as if, like, you're a cheater. And yeah. Like, God damn, you know? It's like the second time I'm talking to you, so. I'm sure. But he has a, a plethora of good things, too. You know, his, his son is a non binary. And he wants to learn makeup, so he wanted like a whole class to learn makeup for his son so he could show his son. Very cute! So it's like, it's a shitty contestant, but he's such a good father that yeah. you're just like, fine! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you're a good dad! <laughs> Alright then! Get it. <laughs> we'll take you! Yeah, like he's a bad man, like a, ba a bad boyfriend, but a good father. Mm -hmm. And there's people like that in life that can be like good friends, very bad boyfriend. So you have to like, be able to stay friends with the people that are good friends without crossing that line. Because they're not good boyfriend or girlfriend. So Asher, not a fan. Not a fan. No, I'm not a... But, but which one's your favorite? Oh, I forgot, I forgot his name. Okay, there's the Wyatt. Wyatt. Sam. Sam. Sam's my favorite too. Sam, Sam is adorable. Sam was a sweetheart. I don't know why she didn't go for Sam. He was so cute. He was so nice. Like, there's a moment at one point where they go in a restaurant, like, where there's a belly dancing. Mm -hmm. And they has no that they're going to make her dance. And she's not comfortable. So Sam jumps, is like, perfect, I'll do it. And he tells the producer, you know what, Bea's not had enough today. Like, I'm doing the belly dance thing. And he's like, dancing. <laughs> and how cute is that? He was a sweetheart. He treated her with respect. He liked her, but it didn't feel as if, you know, he was, again, fetishizing her. Like, he no. just he just liked her. Like, like, because he liked her, he wanted to fuck her. <laughs> and yeah. That's nice. You know, I want that in life. <laughs> but I can be undone right on me in bed. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it felt great to see that. But I feel like the way that she treated him, she treated him more like a cute younger brother. Yeah, but that... that's on her. <laughs> Shame on her. Yeah, so, be, yeah, so you, we knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. The thing with Bray, right? So Asher was like, how dare you say... Which, it's not your business. Sam, they were walking, they was like, are you are you gonna ask me about Ray? He was like, I don't know, do you want to talk about it? She's like, not really. It's like, cool. No, no that's none of my business. <laughs> like, maturity. Thank so you. simple. <laughs> From like a 23 year old guy. I don't yeah. Need like that. Yeah, I love Sam. I wish she had finished with Sam instead of Asher. Alright, so basically, to conclude a little bit of our video, we wanted to talk about one last thing, mm. which is the message of the book. Personally, I was proud of her journey. You know, again, at the end, she realized, again, I'm, a, I'm my own person. I'm not just. A fat person. I deserve happiness as much as anyone else. I deserve love, respect, you know, the basic stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I love the fact that she realized that. I, I wanna, you know, I wanna have that same journey. I mean, that, that exact same you journey. You don't wanna go to TV reality? Eh, I'm good. 16 men at once. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Kill me. So, the one to watch. What her rating would, you, would we give it to? All right, I'll just stare at the wall for an hour. Okay, well, for me, it was... It was a good book, but... Thank you, next time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was good, it was good while it lasted. It really was good and while it lasted. Give it that rating just because... I liked the universe of TV reality. Seeing, like, the back side of it all, it was mm -hmm. interesting to me. I liked the fact that she's a fat character. Which we don't find a lot. I would have loved another fat character that was just confident in herself or in himself, just in herself, yeah. basically. I'm near the first time, but, but I'm not there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get around our people. So, for next, well, for next week, we're going to talk about a book that is, how do I say that? Um, it's going to be a rent video. Yeah. It really is going to be a rent video. And I'm so sorry that I'm going to put you through that. <laughs> So we're going to talk about Rebel, 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 Rebels, Rebels. City of Indra, <laughs> City of Indra, the book by well, mostly Ghost Rider, but yeah. <laughs> Kendall and Kelly Jenner. Again, you're free of your actions, but again, if you do read it and then hate it, don't hate it on us. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're just a messenger. <laughs> we just want you to enjoy good books and then bad books, so you can appreciate the good books even more. That's what we do. Amen. We're doing this for the cause. <laughs> Thanks again for sticking by, like, subscribe, all of that. Don't forget to bring your bag, your jackets, 
don't forget anything in this room. It's not ours. The janitor's mm -hmm. gonna steal everything, so. He really is, that little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you back in two weeks. Ciao, bye. Ciao.